there are 185 prisoners on death row in the state of Texas. David Wood, 66 years old, 30 years on death row. In 1987, a number of young women in the age range of 14 to 24 went missing from El Paso, Texas. The bodies of six women were soon found in shallow graves in the desert, and the murders became known as the Northeast Desert Murders. American serial killer and rapist David Wood, sometimes known as the Desert Killer, murdered at least six women in El Paso, Texas between May and August 1987 before concealing their bodies in the desert. Despite his denials, he was found guilty and given the death penalty for the killings of Ivy Williams, Desiree Whitley, Karen Baker, Angelica Frausto, Rosa Maria Cassio, and Don Smith. The state provided ample proof of Wood's impending risk throughout the trial's punishment phase. The state presented evidence that Wood had previously been found guilty of essay of a child and indecency with a child. He was sentenced to 5, 20, and 50 years in prison for those offenses respectively. A sex worker testified that on September 19, 1987, Wood approached her as she was waiting for a bus and offered her money in exchange for sex. She entered Wood's vehicle and instructed him to find a hotel. Instead, he drew a knife and threatened to kill her while also essaying her. As the truck was still driving, the woman leaped out and hurt herself. Another lady testified that Wood grabbed her when she was 13 years old and essayed her under a bridge as she was walking home. A third lady claimed that he approached her when she was 12 years old and requested her assistance in locating his dog. At last, he grabbed her and proceeded to essay her. Another woman said that when she was 23 years old, Wood and another man gave her a ride home from work. She claimed that after arriving to some apartments, both males got out. Wood returned to the truck by himself and began to drive. He stopped by the side of the road and essayed her. Tony Ford, 50 years old, 30 years on death row for killing 18-year-old Armando Murillo during a house invasion in El Paso in late 1991, Ford received a death sentence. The attackers also tried to kill the mother and two sisters of Armando Murillo. The Murillo family saw their cousin perform on Christmas play on December 18, 1991. At the conclusion of the play, the family returned to the home of their mother, Mira Murillo, for a quick dinner. Later that evening, the mother and her three kids, Mira Magdalena, Armando, and Lisa, planned to go Christmas shopping together. After supper, Lisa was in the kitchen, Mira Magdalena was getting ready in her bedroom for her shopping excursion, and Armando was in the family room watching television. A short while later, Mira Magdalena emerged into the hallway to ask her family to move quickly. At that time, she spotted her mother and her brother retreating from the doorway. Her mother was backing up as if she was scared for her life, and her brother appeared as if he had been hit in the head and was huddled in the corner. Mira claimed that after a brief period of time, she noticed Tony Ford standing near her, right at the entrance to her bedroom. She also saw his companion, later identified as Van Nash Belton. She testified that they both had guns. Lisa stated that she heard a barging in, just a lot of commotion, like somebody kicking wood. She saw two strangers in the hallway with guns. The two men ordered all the family members to kneel on the floor and be quiet. They demanded to know where the man of the house was and where the money was, and then demanded jewelry and other valuables, including car keys. When Lisa threw a set of car keys at Ford, he became angry. Then he shot Armando in the back of the head. He shot Mrs. Murillo in the head. He shot but missed Mira, who feigned injury, and shot Lisa in the shoulder. Ford was the shooter and the person who was dominant, doing the most of the talking and giving most of the orders, according to Mira and Lisa. Jose Rivera, 61 years old, 29 years on death row, for the murder of 3-year-old Daniel Luis Blanco in Brownsville, Texas, while performing or attempting an aggravated essay, Rivera was found guilty and given the death penalty in May 1994. Veronica Zavala moved into the Brownsville flat close to Daniel Luis Blanco's family in June 1993. Soon after, Zavala grew close to Carolina Blanco, the victim's mother. 
In the morning of July 9, 1993, Carolina and her two sons were at home. Louis left the apartment briefly before entering it again with Zavala. Zavala had given Louis a popsicle, which he was holding. She requested to use the phone. After she took the call, Zavala opened the door and exited with Louis. Many calls were temporarily taking up Carolina Blanco's time in the meanwhile. Carolina went to search for Zavala and Louis around five minutes after they had departed. Neither Zavala nor Louis could be found, according to her. After that, Carolina contacted the police, who then started looking for Louis. Zavala went back to her flat without Louis, around three hours later. According to testimony from Carolina Blanco, Zavala was biting on a popsicle stick that her son had earlier that day. Zavala became furious and denied knowing anything about Carolina's son, and she refused to give any details. On the morning of July 10, 1993, a tiny pond in the nearby Lincoln Park was where Lewis's naked body was discovered floating face down. The water close to his body included his checkered shorts and white tennis shoes. A single knot was used to secure a ligature made from the victim's underwear waistband around his neck. Police discovered indications that Lewis had also been essayed. Despite spending 18 to 36 hours in the water, pathologist Dr. Marguerite DeWitt testified that the victim did not drown. Instead, ligature strangulation was the cause of death. The child's father, Alejandro Blanco, testified that Luis had been in excellent health on the morning of the murder. In a statement she made on July 10, 1993, Zavala admitted to her involvement in the murder and named José Alfredo Rivera as a suspect. Rivera also confessed to strangling the boy and using a finger to essay him. He admitted to this in two written statements on July 10th and the videotaped oral confession on July 11th. The child's underpants had been cut off and tied around his neck with a single knot, the time of death was compatible with the time indicated by Rivera, and various other facts of Rivera's confession were supported by independent evidence in addition to the child's strangulation and injuries. Co-defendant Veronica Zavala is currently serving a life sentence after being charged with capital murder as well. Gerald Elridge, 59 years old, 29 years on death row. Elridge was found guilty of killing Cherisa Bogani and her mother Cynthia Bogani. Both Cynthia's and Elridge's 9-year-old son Terrell and Cynthia's then-boyfriend Wayne Dodson were shot, but they survived the attack where the two were killed. At Elridge's capital murder trial, Terrell Bogany testified. He informed the jury that his father had shot his sister between the eyes at close range after he had kicked through the door. He also talked about how his father had stood over him and fired at his head during both the shooting of Dodson and his own shooting. He claimed that the gunshot entered his shoulder as he turned his head. In addition, he claimed to have seen Elridge chasing after his mother as she fled the apartment. She was shot outdoors. Elridge refused to watch the penalty phase of his 1994 trial. Before passing judgment on the death penalty, a jury in Harris County took about 30 minutes to deliberate. Documents stated Elridge was convicted in 1985 to eight years in jail for attempted murder for shooting a man eight times. After being freed three years later, he was sent back to jail in 1990 for abusing his son. Records showed he attempted to kill the youngster after receiving his release four months later. Please hit that subscribe button if you like my channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.